Hey guys, today we're going to cover creating arrays. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. Alright, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start another new file. So go up to your file menu and pick the option for new, general. No need to save this file. And having just talked about duplicates versus duplicating instances of an object, it's a good time to talk about what do you do if you want to create an array or multiple copies at the same time. When we're duplicating instances or just duplicating objects, we're having to sort of duplicate them one by one. And while there are strategies for maybe grabbing several and duplicating them at the same time, it can be helpful with certain types of things you're going to create to have an array where you can evenly space the duplicates or work with them in a more organized fashion. Now, it turns out that Blender has a different way to work with arrays than what we've already been doing with duplicates versus instances. So let's dig into this. And we're going to have to dig into an entirely new functionality in Blender called modifiers. Now, modifiers are far too big to cover in one single lesson. So we're going to barely scratch the surface here just so we can talk about arrays. But don't worry, modifiers are something we're going to cover in depth in an upcoming set of lessons. I just wanted to make sure to talk about the array modifier right here when most people have the question about arrays. So we've selected this object. Over on the right, you'll see just below the object properties icon, which is what the default is here for what we're seeing, there's this little wrench. And if you hover over it, it says modifier properties. Go ahead and click on that. And you'll see that it says add modifier. We've selected the cube. So the cube is what is here and we can add a modifier to it. Go ahead and click on add modifier and it will drop down a menu of many, many options. And as I mentioned, we're not going to talk about any of them other than this very first one here on the generate column that says array. So go ahead and click on array. Now the very first thing you see is it almost seems like this object scaled up a bit. But if we go over to the array, we see that it says count to. Go ahead and click on the right arrow a couple of times to go to three, then four, and you'll see that it's grown again. So what's going on here? Well, it'll be easier to tell if we change the offset. So over here on the factor X on the right hand side, click on the right arrow once and then click on it one more time. And you'll see now that the offset is 1.2, which essentially says there's 0.2 spacing here, 0.2 spacing here, 0.2 spacing here. And the count means that there are four total copies in this array of the object. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here, and for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube, and this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And now back to the lesson. Now, as I mentioned, there is so much to cover, not only with modifiers in general, but even to dig into the array modifier to the level that you could use it to create some really complicated stuff. But we're not going to cover all that in this lesson. What we're going to do is double back real quick and talk about what really is an array when we think about it from the outliners perspective. The first thing we'll notice if we go up to the outliner is that we have one cube object, but unlike a duplicate or a duplicated instance, we don't have multiple cube objects. If we twirl this down to look inside, we have one cube data model. And if we twirl this down, we see something about a material, but we don't see a whole bunch of other stuff that indicates multiple copies of an object. So let's go ahead and twirl this back up. So what's going on here? Well, you'll notice too that if you click once in space and then click once on the original cube, it doesn't select only that cube. It selects all of the cubes. So they're all part of the same object. 
What a modifier is actually doing though, is it's respecting the original object and its object's data, and then it's applying something temporarily, if you will, in this case, making copies of it. So it's not creating new geometry or new objects or new object data in Blender's eyes. It's just temporarily displaying things a certain way. The temporary part, again, we won't cover that yet and how to make it permanent and what else we can do with modifiers. For right now, it's just enough to know that really all we have here is this original object and its object's data. And then the modifier is handling showing us the object several times. Press tab on your keyboard and you'll switch to edit mode. And you'll notice press three on your top keyboard. That's the uh, face selection mode. And you'll notice if you try to click on any of these other faces, you can't select them. You can only select the original object itself. So click on this top face to select it. And then go ahead and press G for grab and move it up or to the side. And you'll see that you're moving all of them at the same time. So in a way, it's like you're impacting these as if they were instances. But you'll also notice that as you kind of tilt this, it seems like the array's distance is changing too. And that has to do with a combination of how this object's data is changing relative to then the spacing that the modifier is stipulating here. Again, this is an abstract concept and we're barely scratching the surface here. So I don't expect you to completely understand what's going on under the hood. The main idea here is that if you're talking about duplicating objects and you start to think to yourself, I need 20 of these or 40 of these, there is this modifier called an array modifier. It will be how you'll handle those sorts of things in Blender. And it's just important right now to understand that you really only ever have the one cube. It's just being shown multiple times. And so when it comes down to editing that single cube, there's some things about how the modifier interprets it that will affect how it actually gets displayed. For right now, that's actually all we need to know about the array modifier. When we get to a future set of lessons, when we dig deeper into modifiers, we'll come back to the array modifier and figure out how to use it to actually create some real world stuff. But this should answer your question. We can create duplicates. We can create duplicated instances. And when we need to create a bunch of stuff, we can use the array modifier. But for right now, let's go ahead and table this topic of arrays and modifiers for a future lesson. And we'll get back to discussing a few more things you can do relative to the outliner and how your file is organized so you can work with multiple objects in Blender. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.